The skiing season is over at Coronet Peak, Queenstown, but there's still enough snow about to attract a few enthusiasts. Even they might have thought twice about it if they'd had to trudge back up those slopes each time. The snow is soft and the going's hard, but this 100-yard ski tow saves them the trouble and gets them there in a jiffy. Driven by a small petrol winch, the tow consists of an endless rope. It can be used by only one person at a time. He can grip the rope with his hands, or a belt with hooks can be used. And down they go again. They've had a good season and they're looking forward to even better ones. Otago sportsmen hope the next New Zealand Championships will be held at Coronet Peak. Better luck next year, sport. In a Christchurch foundry, molten metal is being drawn for plowshares. In this foundry, pouring is a daily event, for there's always a big demand. To these men, this is a routine job, but in terms of a nation's economy, is an important occupation. Between farming and foundry have always been close ties, but in our efforts to grow more food to aid Britain, this relationship is doubly important. This foundry makes a variety of farm machinery, and to keep up with demand, these men are working 50 hours a week. More cultivators and more drills mean more production. In a Palmerston North workshop, men are assembling the first of a new type of header harvester. Being self-propelled, this header has its own motor and is able to work on its own power. When assembled, it's given a trial run. 70 of these headers have just been landed in New Zealand, and they'll help to ease the labor problem at harvest time. In a fertilizer works in Whanganui, workers are bagging superphosphate. They too are links in the food production chain. These men realize the importance of their work and through their union have pledged their official support to the Aid for Britain campaign. They've undertaken to work longer hours and in view of the bag shortage to refill used bags. This will avoid delays in dispatching fertilizer and it's a big contribution for few things are so dusty and unpleasant to handle as used manure bags. At the country stations, the farmers take delivery of the super. For New Zealand farmers, fertilizer is the lifeblood. Its extensive use for cultivation and top dressing has helped to make them the world's most productive farmers, of being able to produce more per man than farmers elsewhere. For this Otaki farmer, this superphosphate will mean more cows per acre, more butterfat per cow. It's a pattern that we want repeated all over New Zealand. On a Masterton dairy farm, efforts are being made to milk more cows. What farmers have been asked to do is to produce another can of cream, for every extra can of cream means an extra 256 butter rations. We're a farming country, and Britain is our best market. In helping her, we're helping ourselves. Rotoria is the scene of a great Maori gathering. 5,000 people have come from every part of the country, and the occasion marks the opening of the Uhe Pohatu Hall to commemorate the war sacrifices of the men of the Tairawhiti district. The visitors are welcomed with a haka given by the local school children. The Governor-General and the Leader of the Opposition find the haka entertaining, but the older members of the tribe take a more critical interest in the action songs of the rising generation. After the haka, a school children's choir sings a modern Maori melody. Thank you. 
the visitors have been welcomed to the Marai, and now the Governor General awards decorations for services and gallantry in the late war. Colonel Aratewi was OC the Maori Battalion and receives the military cross. Sister Nipia is decorated for her fine work in nursing. Altogether, 20 decorations were awarded at the ceremony. The rugby match between the Maori All Blacks and the East Coast is opened by a haka. <laughs> There are 5,000 spectators to watch the game. It's fast and open, but the All Blacks have the upper hand most of the time. Their combination is better than the East Coast team. East Coast attacks, but the All Black tackling is pretty solid. Once again, East Coast are over into all black territory. But defensive kicking by the fullback takes the sting out of the movement. The sides change round and the all blacks really get going. There's a fierce rush over the line, and it's over. Come on, you East Coast boys. The All Blacks win by 24 to 11, but at the last moment East Coast score a try and the kick is taken by the great George Nepia. 23 years after reaching his top form, Nepia can still kick a long high goal. It's over! The match is ended and everyone goes home. It's the end of a memorable Maori gathering. Thank <laughs> you.